Hello everyone once again this is Tom from MTG Radio with a what has now become rare uh, EDH deck tech um, I got the really bad hankering to play some more EDH and I really 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 wanted to transfer one of my in real life decks online and so I did and it's the evil zombie assassin named Thraxi Mundar uh, for four blue black and a red he's a 6-6 six, six hasty awesome legendary creature. Whenever he attacks, defending player sacrifices a creature. Whenever a player sacrifices a creature, you may put a plus one plus one counter on Thraxamundar. So, this is again, I think I talked about this with Crush, one of those legends that you can really try and build around, but it's really hard because it's whenever Thrax... <clears throat> sorry. It really causes you to sacrifice creatures, or the defending player to sacrifice creatures, and with the advent of Eldrazi spawn, that's really cool. You can do it with stuff like Emrakul's Hatcher, if you want to go that route. Personally, I just like the colors Grixis for what they do. And so I just thought I would go over a lot of the different choices in the deck and show you what they do. Basically go over the deck as a whole, as usual. Uh, we'll start with one of the most important um, things you can start with, which is removal. Uh, the first of which I put in the, I believe they're called 187s, uh, when they come into play they kill something so stuff like skin render from scars for two black black three three enters the battlefield put three negative one negative one counters on target creature great guy neck troll directly kills a dude uh... for the same price as skin render flame tongue kavu also known as ftk he made the cut all the way from our crush edh deck tech in like probably a year ago by now uh... barter and blood uh, Removal, each player sacrifices two creatures. This is great. It hits all of your opponents at once. This is a multiplayer format, so this is important. Grixis Charm, give something negative four, negative four, or you can Alpha Strike with plus two, plus O, oh, or you can turn a permanent to its owner's hand. Uh, I've actually used the return of permanent more than anything else, but sometimes you need the negative four, negative four, and sometimes you need the Alpha Strike to win. Repulse, although not removal, uh, probably should go on the control pile side. It's just a great card in total. Uh, returning a creature to its owner's hand and drawing a card off of it, surprisingly really strong. Slavable Loss, uh, this is probably one of my favorite cards from Alart Reborn, uh, for three red, blue, red, and a black. Um, gain control target creature, untap it, it gains haste and sacrifice at the beginning of the next end step. You get to take their best guy, hit them in the face, and then kill it, which is awesome. Bituminous Blast, uh, this is one of those cards that became a staple in standard for a while and it just has the power to make it over to EDH decks. Uh, Shriek Maw, uh, again one of those great creatures that comes into play and kills something. Duplicant does it a little bit better, it exiles. Um, and Inferno Titan uh, is just a great large beater all around. I'm going to calmly move him over into the um, ways to kill your opponent pile. <laughs> uh, profane Command. It can kill a creature, return something, gonna put it into the recursion pile really quickly. Avatar Woe, uh, again, a creature that kills creatures. You really, it's really great. It's also a great card with Necrotic Ooze, which is over here. There's a lot of cards in here that are great with Necrotic Ooze, so you'll see them. Uh, the next one is a, uh, a category that's often not really taken into account when building non-green decks, and that's fixing. And although I don't have a lot, I have enough, I believe. Armorulary Sphere is a great card from Conflux. I love it to death. You should play it in every single EDH deck for two colorless. It's an artifact. For two, you can tap it to sacrifice it. Search your library for up to two basic land cards, reveal them, put them into your hand, then shuffle your library. Unless you're playing a clear deck like Karn, uh, he goes into your deck immediately. All the signets for the colors, so Demir, it, and Rakdos. Prophetic Prism is a card that came out of Rise of the Eldrazi. Uh, comes into play, you draw a card. One, tap a dab, one man of any color to your mana pool. This is great for casting cards like Cruel Ultimatum, so keep it in mind. And then Sensei's Divining Top, although definitely a controlling card, it's great at fixing, and it lets you keep really sketchy hands. Uh, now on to Recursion. Uh, there's a lot of cards in this there's a lot of cards in this deck that you just want to bring back a lot, or cards in your opponent's graveyards that you want to bring back a lot. So we have cards like Necromancy. Uh, this is a crazy card from Visions. If you can see, it has a large wall of text. Uh, basically, you get to take a creature card from the graveyard into the battlefield. You can cast it as an instant. Um, 
If you do so, you only get the creature for a turn. But if you cast it during your turn, you take it for total. Uh, Nizumi Grave Robber is a great way to remove graveyards, so it actually hurts other recursion decks. But then when you flip it, he becomes a four and a black. Uh, he becomes, you can, uh, not raise dead. But yeah, you can basically zombify a creature every single turn. Uh, rise from the grave a creature every single turn. Animate Dead is one of the classics. You get to return a creature card to the battlefield. Uh, from the graveyard, it only gets negative one, uh, neg a negative zero. So great. Dance of the Dead, not as good as Raise Dead, but um, just as fun. The only thing is it doesn't untap during its controller's untap step, so you usually have to just find ancillary cards, stuff like Una to bring back, or Geth. Makeshift Mannequin, uh, it's great to get recursion at instant speed. Another great card from Lorwyn and a great recursion card. Mimic Fat. Uh, rarely backfires, usually just when you drop it down on turn 3. People don't really quiver in fear, but they definitely take notice. If it's on the battlefield, it's always a target. And then Profane Command. It's a good card. So then we're going to go into the real reason why I love Grixis and why I've come to appreciate blue is there's a lot of control and card draw in this deck, stuff like Factor Fiction. Uh, Memory Plunder is a good all-around card, but it's great at giving yourself access to instant speed Wrath of Gods from other players' graveyards. If someone casts Insurrection, you can Memory Plunder the same Insurrection on, during the same turn. There's a lot of good things that can go on. Clone is great to keep generals in check. Sakashimi is great to copy generals without killing them. Uh, Venser is an awesome card. I just sprung for him after making money off of the Shadowmore drafts. But um, Venser is a great card all around. Comes into play, return target spell, permanent to owner's hand. Also great with the animate deads uh, and necromancy and stuff like that. Hinder is specifically for general. I think it's the, it is the only counter spell I run for one blue blue because it's right now it's just foily and looking at you because it looks really cool. Uh, you get to put a spell on the top of a, of a player's uh, you get to counter spell, but instead of putting it into the graveyard, put it onto the top of its owner's library or onto the bottom of its owner's library. It's great for uh, what's known as tucking generals and getting them out of your hair. Tidings, five minutes to draw four cards. It's really powerful. Uh, the Jinnah Wishes is a fun card I like to include in all my blue decks. Sometimes you just really, really, really need a random card off the top of your deck. Sometimes it's a land. Sometimes it's Avatar Woe. Sometimes it's Inferno Titan. So... It can hit really well. Mold Drifter enters the battlefield, draws two cards. It's a really strong card. Card draw on a creature is always strong. Cruel Ultimatum is awesome. There's a reason it's so good in extended, or double standard as it is now. And it has a place in my heart. Uh, Skeletal Scrying is an awesome card from what I believe is Odyssey for X and a black. Additional cost to cast Skeletal Scrying Exile X cards from your graveyard. Remember, this is an instant. You draw X cards and you lose X life. At the end of someone's turn, lose 8 life and draw 8 cards, leaving the best of your graveyard stuff you want to recur in your graveyard is such a such a good thing. Um, random text from girlfriend. Uh, one black black, Phyrexian Arena. Strong card. If you're playing black, you play it. Uh, same with Shadow Man Infiltrator. If you're playing Blue Black, you play him. Uh, he's John Finkel, so you can't lose if you play John Finkel. That's pretty much how it works. Telling Time is some of the strongest card draw recently reprinted in 10th edition. Not really recently, but reprinted in 10th edition. Printed in Ravnica. Awesome, awesome way to filter through your deck. We have Skull Clamp to just up all your creatures. One of my favorite cards given to me by, um, and by given to me, I mean he gave it so that I could play it in a tournament that I never gave it back. Uh, Gilded Drake. Uh, by at Caveman Kellen on Twitter. Uh, gonna read it out for you so you realize how awesome this card is. It's for one in a blue. It's a flying 3 3. When Gilded Drake enters the battlefield, exchange control of Gilded Drake and up to one target creature and opponent controls. If you don't, make an exchange, sacrifice him. This ability can't be countered except by spells and abilities. So what this means is when you play Gilded Drake for one in a blue, you put it onto the battlefield, then you switch it with somebody else's creature. Um, and it's not like control magic where if they bounce skill to Drake, they get back the creature. You have it. It's yours. You exchanged. Um, it goes into their graveyard, and if it gets shuffled into a library, shuffled into their library. All the other ownership things matter, but it's yours. The best thing you can do with Gilded Drake is to give it to someone and bounce it into your hand and just keep on doing it. It's also great with uh, recursion, like Necromancy. At the end of turn, if you Necromancy in your Gilded Drake to switch it for somebody else's, then it dies and goes back into your graveyard. You become a very happy camper. 
Callus Oppressor is another card I kind of found recently. For one blue, blue it's a 1-2. Uh, you can choose not to untap it during your untap step. As he enters the battlefield, an opponent chooses a creature type. Tap to gain control target creature that is another chosen type for as long as Callus Oppressor remains tapped. So basically, what happens with Callus Oppressor is you choose a player who isn't playing a tribal deck, and they pick the creature type of their best creature, and then you get to tap and gain control of any creature you pretty much want. It's great. It's an upward scaling mind control, and I'm such a big fan of it. Uh, next, we have Maloku the Clouded Mirror. Apparently, it's a guy. Didn't realize this. Should have read the flavor text, even though it's a very, very, very pretty guy. Effeminate. Uh, these, he's the first in our liege of game enders. Uh, flying 2 4 for 4 and a blue. For one, return a land you control to its owner's hand. Put a 1 1 blue illusion creature token flying onto the battlefield. It gives you so much time to stall and so much time to sit there and just generate such card advantage that he will end the game when he hits the battlefield. Same with Spellbound Dragon. This is a card that I love from uh, Lara Reborn. Uh, for three, a blue and a red, it's a 3 5 flying dragon. But when he attacks, you get the looter. But the card you discard gives him plus X plus O. So he can be a 10 5, he can be a 4 5. He's great. Rider Replication. Pretty much whenever you cast this with Kicker, you automatically win the game. Uh, for two and a blue and a blue, and with a Kicker of five, so don't ever cast this without the Kicker, guys. Uh, you get to put five tokens of a creature onto the battlefield. Yay. Geth Lord of the Vault is an awesome Mythic Rare from Scars, currently going for like 1.2 tickets for some reason. When he hits the battlefield, if he isn't removed from the battlefield, you will win the game. That's just how it works. Worm Quarrel Engine, uh, he's a 6-6 beater for 6, it's lifelink and die doesn't get killed through wraths. Awesome. Insurrection is a legitimate game ender. When you cast Insurrection, you should kill at least two people. If you don't, you wait another turn to cast your Insurrection. <laughs> it's just an awesome card. It's great when you enter a into a game with three other green players, and you get to laugh. And you just cast Insurrection, you win. With a smile on your face. Extanguinate, I uh, was at odds with Trevor, the other half or maybe third of MTG cast uh, about Exsanguinate I said that uh, Genesis Wave is better then he gave me the situation of you can Genesis Wave for 33 and not win the game until the next turn but if you Exsanguinate for 33 you automatically win the game so card is awesome Kiga uh, usually recursion battles end up around Kaiga but that's just because of how strong it is and it can end the game by itself and Inferno Titan you saw I brought it over from Creature Kill. It's just an amazingly strong card. I didn't show up the money for Grave Titan or Frost Titan or else I'd be in here. And then, and then finally we have the ancillary cards or the support cards. Uh, we have a really not that decent tutor in Beseech the Queen. But for a card with CMC less than or equal to the number of lands you control, I've always liked it. It, it hasn't been bad to me. Una, Queen of the Fae, is a game ender. I, don't, I put it in the wrong pile. It's also great with another one of our ancillary cards, Necrotic Ooze. Uh, if it's on the battlefield, is all activated abilities of all creature cards and all graveyards. Please remember this is all graveyards. So many people don't read the whole card. They think it's your own graveyard. All graveyards mean so, so, so much. Uh, Ashling, the extinguisher, she is such a beating. Uh, everyone has to block her, and then when you put something like Sword of Fire and Ice on her, there is just no good blocks for your opponent. Uh, Vesuvian Shapeshifter is a controlling card, but it's also an ancillary card. Uh, I've begun to like it more. When I first started playing it, I was never a fan. Teferi, uh, he is not a game ender, but he's a good way of keeping everyone honest, especially if you're playing against other blue players. Uh, the first blue player to play Teferi usually wins, so if you're ever in a game with like two blue players, it's good to be packing some Teferi action. Bribery is great against large green decks. Thankfully, Emrakul has been banned as of the posting of this video. But um, at first it was in this to control Emrakul, and now it's in here to get the other Eldrazi that people are playing instead of Emrakul. Venser's Journal, possibly one of the best cards from Scars of Mirrodin for EDH. Uh, for 5 mana, you have no maximum hand size, and at the beginning of your upkeep, you gain 1 life for each card in your hand. So much stronger than people give it credit for. <laughs> Rise and Fall is one of my favorite cards. Split card from, uh, looks like Dissension. Uh, return for blue-black, you can return a creature card from a graveyard and a creature on the battlefield to their owner's hand. Uh, remember, you this means that you can bounce one of your opponent's creatures. You get to raise dead and boomerang with this card. It's 
amazingly strong. Then fall for black and red. Target people re target player reveals two cards at random from his or her hand. Then discards each non-land card revealed this way. It's great when you're versing again a blue player or a player with two cards left in hand. You just cast it for two and they discard him. Not as mean as Mind Shatter, but fairly good. Relic of Progenitus, uh, Graveyard Hate, that's non-exclusive. Really important if you're versing a deck like Teneb. Uh, this deck doesn't really like to play it, but I haven't run into the quandary of playing your Relic of Progenitus or playing your Animate Dead yet. I'm sure I will. Final card is Propaganda. For two and a blue, creatures can't attack unless the controller plays two for each creature he or she controls that's attacking to you. When you play Thraxi Mundar, people are going to want to kill you. Uh, it's a very strong general. has the ability to win games. This deck definitely has the ability to win games. I win games all the time with it. And um, it's kind of costly in this version, but it can cost even more. Uh, if you have the bankroll, you can put in Jace the Mind Sculptor and Nicol Bolas are two cards that this deck would like. Same with Oblivion Stone and Damnation. Uh, it's a very controlling deck. I like it. Uh, sometimes when I want to win a game, whenever I want to play and I want to win, I play Thraxamundar. Uh, whenever I want to play and just dirtle around, I have other decks for that. But this deck is for winning. Um, if you want to win an EDH deck, if you want to win an EDH game or you want to show off in front of your friends or you want to show your awesome foily cards, this card is perfect for you. This deck is perfect for you. If you have any updates, suggestions, anything like that, uh, Leave a comment on the YouTube video, uh, tweet us at, at MTG Radio, or send us an email at edhradio at gmail.com, and remember to look out for MTG Radio, uh, we are a podcast that details Commander and EDH, I was going to say Commander and EDH, but EDH and random news topics that do come up, uh, we're really fun, we love having new listeners, and we love supporting our listener base, uh, this is part of it, so I hope you enjoyed this video, I know I enjoy making them. And I do know how to stop the video this time, which is nice. So thank you so much for listening, and have a th uh, thanks for tuning in.